Okay, this is the notes for section 6.8, regular polygons. Um, if you haven't done so already, make sure you read your uh, book for section 6.8 before continuing on. Um, so we, we've talked about polygons uh, quite a bit over the last few chapters here. And now what we want to do is we want to define what a regular polygon is. When we say a regular polygon, it's a convex polygon whose angles are all congruent and whose sides are all congruent. Okay, So th the important part here is that all of the angles are congruent and all of the sides are congruent. Okay, Both have to happen. Well, what, that, what we're saying then is that, that it, any, a regular polygon has to be both equilateral which is where, where the sides are all of equal length, and it has to be equal angular, in which all the angles have an equal measure. So if you look at these pictures over here, this would be a representation of where the, the angles are not equal, but all the sides are equal. And if you look at this, this equal angular hexagon, all of the angles are equal, but the sides are not of the same length. Okay. Well, in order for it to be a regular polygon, both have to occur, both equilateral and equal angular. So this would represent the different um, uh, regular polygons. Now, two of them have special names for a, a, and we've studied both of them already. A triangle is an e if, if it's a triangle, it would be an equilateral triangle. Okay, and for a square, it's just called for for a quadrilateral. The regular quadrilateral is called a square. So those two have special names. All the other ones we just say regular, and then whatever the name of that figure is, so regular pentagon or regular hexagon, etc. <laughs> So let's take a look at example one here. It says, uh, find the measure of each interior angle of a regular nonagon. Well, what we know, because it's a regular nonagon, we know all of its angles have to be equal. And we know that a nonagon has nine sides, and we can count them up here on the, the picture as well, but a regular nonagon would have nine sides. Therefore, to find the measure of each of those angles, we're going to take the sum of all of the angles of a regular nonagon and divide it by 9. Well, I know the regular, if, if I take any regular figure, the number, the, the, the sum of the angles is n minus 2 times 180. So if I take that number divided by the number of sides that are there, we will have the, the value or the measure of any one given angle. So in this particular case, I'm going to take 9 minus 2 times 180, and then I'm going to take that number and I'm going to divide it by 9, the number of sides, to get the value of that angle. So then the measure of that angle would be 140 degrees. So each of the angles of a regular nonagon would have a measure of 140 degrees. Okay, the uh, center of a regular polygon theorem just says for every for any regular polygon there's a unique point which we call its center that is equidistant from its vertices. Uh, there's a real easy way to find that center point and that is if we can draw in two lines of symmetry of that figure uh, where they intersect that point would be the center point of that regular polygon. So every regular polygon has both rotation and reflection symmetry. So if I look at the regular polygon rotation symmetry theorem it just says if it's a regular anagon it has n-fold rotation symmetry. In other words however many sides the regular polygon has, that's how many fold rotation symmetric that figure is. So if I look at this uh, regular nonagon that I had up above here, because there's nine sides, we would say it is nine fold rotation symmetric. Okay? 
Now, if we look at the regular polygon reflection symmetry theorem, reflection symmetry theorem here, then we can say the following. Every regular polygon has reflection symmetry, and each line containing its center and the vertex are a line of symmetry, and each perpendicular bisector of its sides is a line of symmetry. Okay, so if I look at a uh, a a this this nonagon here, we can draw in all the lines of symmetry, and there'll be a total of nine of them. Now, this kind of leads us back to this this center of a regular polygon, and and if we want to find that center, all we have to do is is draw in two of the lines of symmetry, and where they intersect, that point will be the symmetry, that, that, that point will be, excuse me, the center for the rotation symmetry. So if I look at this um, regular nonagon above, I've drawn in two of the lines of symmetry, and that point where they intersect, that point would represent the center of the rotation symmetry. Okay? So it is both regular, regular polygons are both rotation and reflection symmetric. Okay, so what I'd like you to do then is, um, at this time, if you could uh, pause the video and do number two here, where I'm asking you to draw in all the lines of symmetry of this regular nonagon. And once you do that, you can turn the video back on, and I'll have all of those lines drawn in for you. Okay, so all of these lines would represent uh, the lines of symmetry of this nonagon. There are a total of nine lines. You'll notice that each of the angles has been bisected, and each of the sides, a, a line is a perpendicular bisector of that particular segment. Okay, they all intersect in one point. That one point would be the center of the rotation symmetry for that nonagon. Thank <laughs> you.